Hi, I'm Kylie McNeil. I played Belle and Suzu in Mamoru Hosoda's Belle, and this is the Points of Experience podcast. <laughs> If you know me, if you follow me, if you're listening to this podcast, you more than likely know that I was the voice of Dragon slash Key and Bell, the movie, the anime movie from Mamoru Hosoda uh, and Studio Chizu. So if you know that, then you more than likely know that Kylie McNeil, the voice of Suzu and Bell, is uh, an amazing talent who we you just heard, is going to be joining us on the show today. And I could not be more excited. She is honestly, sincerely, one of the most talented young actors I've ever seen in my life. Like, when I heard the English soundtrack, because I didn't get to hear all these songs until the movie came out, I was just blown away. They had the preview, I think, of one of the, before the movie came out, they did like a little preview of it. And I was just like, I'm a part of this movie. That girl is so good. I was shell-shocked at how good she was. And through seeing everything she's done, she's an exceptional human being, so kind-hearted, honest, a phenomenal actor. Her performance in this movie is just so real and exactly what it needed. I I really, I, I could not be more proud to be a part of the, the movie and to know that she was the the force behind all of its success. So strap in guys. Cause we got Kylie McNeil, the voice of bell and Suzu on the points of experience podcast. So I just saw, or I don't know if I just saw, but you've been, have you been doing shows at studio 54 regularly? I've just been seeing tons of videos of you on Instagram or like announcements of you performing places are you doing that on a consistent basis or are these like one-off things that I, everybody who's listening to this now has missed their chance to see you live? What's the deal <laughs> with that? Well, I do concerts like every couple of months kind of. So okay. um, my most recent one was at uh, 54 Below. Um, 54 Below, not Studio 54. Out. Yeah, close. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> um, and then like I did one in uh, Columbus, Ohio for OhioCon um, also last week. Um, and then before that I performed at the Green Room 42 and like Don't Tell Mama and Anime NYC at the Javits Center. And <sighs> so, but I'll totally be doing more, like more are coming. I just haven't like announced them yet. So how <laughs> fun, how fun and cool is it to be, I mean, we'll talk about the film very shortly, but to be going and putting yourself in front of now like the people who have watched this film and fell in love with it because I'm sure you've performed before and you've been in scenarios where some people may not be familiar with you or you know you're doing a cover of another song but these are songs that people are associating you and your performance and what they've heard in the film how is it seeing and connecting with these audiences where sometimes people are coming out specifically for you in cosplay or you know they want to meet you after Afterwards, how has that whole experience been for you now that it's, you know, this this movie has been out for a minute and people are really, there's diehard fans of it? Oh my god, yeah, I mean, it's been, like, so magical. It's it's made my year, like, doing these shows and meeting those people that, like, come from far away sometimes to see me. Like, I don't know, somebody came from Florida once to New York and I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> I was like... Oh my god. Um but I mean just everyone has been so sweet and like um they just are really passionate about the movie and the story and the music and um I also like will play my original songs um at these shows for them and they've been liking those so it's really exciting to like kind of be uh working on building up uh <laughs> building up their knowledge about myself i don't know um but like, yeah introducing um, them to you as opposed yeah. i mean no pun intended gosh <laughs> introducing them to you as well as what they will know you from already i think that's a wonderful yeah. uh kind of you, you get to do some things that people already know and they know you for and they're excited to. it's like you know you're playing your hits in a way and then you're like check out the new album you know right. it's got <laughs> that effect as well yeah <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to ask or actually I'm very excited about talking to you in general today because I feel like you are where your career at is right now is exactly what I think 
a lot of people are hoping for or a lot of people are um, – they – if they if they've been starting out and they feel like they've got the skill because you are extremely talented and it's no mistake that you have you know you booked bell and you've you're going on to do i believe you are truly at like the so far at the bottom of where you're going to be on the mountain that you climb that i am just so excited to see everything that's in store for you in your career uh the second i heard you in bell I, listen it's you're gonna get a lot of compliments so <laughs> prepare for that I, I i really feel like you were at the start of like a really magical career and for a lot of people who listen to this podcast they're interested in either music or voice acting whatever it might be and i feel like you've just kind of experienced that turn that a lot of people are really hoping for where they've gotten this not only did you get a an opportunity to to showcase all of your talents kind of in one scenario on a huge platform and a huge stage you know sometimes people get that first gig and it's like you know villager number one and i'm sure you've done your fair share of things and i hope to get into that i know you've worked off broadway and you've done a lot of singing and you've gone to you know your your high school years of, of performing arts i want to talk about all that but i feel like a lot of people are waiting for that one role or that one opportunity i've had it a couple of times in my career where you're like it fits like a glove and you're able to just show all of your skill. So I, I, I'm really, I think for anybody listening, I want to make sure I ask all of these questions about how this whole process was for you leading up to doing Bell and now kind of the world after having that success under your belt and the things you're looking towards and your strategies or your business plan, if that's even something you're thinking about at this point in time, <laughs> you know, what is the, what are the next steps considering you've kind of broken through the wall that so many people are desperately trying to, to break through. So to take that all a step back, I think it's great to give some people context of like, how you even got to be as talented as you are to put yourself in the position to to get that role. So I know, um, I, 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 and this is really great too because there's not a ton of, of of info on you on internet on the internet other than the bios I've been able to read. And you had that Variety article, and you did another thing with a like uh, the New York Times did an article on you a few years ago. So I know you're you you come from a family of artists, but where? And when specifically, at what age did you identify that you were interested in, in either acting or singing or the arts? When did that come to a realization for you that not only do you like this, but like I want to pursue it a little bit further than just like singing around the house? Ooh, man. Well, first of all, thank you for saying all that. That's so sweet. That made my day. <laughs> well, one. there's going to be a lot more of it. I really <laughs> hope you're ready. Oh, thank you. Ah. Oh my god. Um but in terms of like uh where I uh, my love for music and singing and acting whatever um began um I mean my whole life yeah my parents are artists they used to be actors and my my uh my abuelo was a flamenco singer and my abuela was a flamenco dancer so it was like everyone was constantly like razzle dazzle um so i kind of grew up listening to like broadway cast albums and like wicked and stuff like that so i always knew i loved it um and then i guess uh the time came when i was applying for like high school and there was this uh performing arts school that my best friend uh went to for middle school it was like a middle school and a high school situation uh -huh. but i went to a very academic middle school and i was like i'm out of here uh -huh. <laughs> so um i guess it kind of really came to fruition when i was uh trying to get into high school and i i got in for musical theater and um that's an experience uh <laughs> musical theater major um and then i kind of oddly enough started to like feel like I wasn't, like, in the right place. Like, I, I kind of felt, uh, I don't know, out of place in, in hmm. musical theater. But then I started writing my own music, just, like, on my own time. I wouldn't show anybody. Like, I wouldn't show anybody my music. <laughs> and, um, but I just kept writing it and uh, since I was, like, 16. And then uh, I guess I kind of realized that was my biggest passion, and then it's only recently that I actually started showing people <laughs> my <laughs> own music. So, yeah, I guess that's 
those are a couple of things that I Wow. Yeah. Well, I want to I want to unpack a couple of things here. So, you had in middle school, you had been singing, I guess, obviously you said you had influence from your family and that when at what point did you know or did this not happen until you were in high school? Did you realize that like I'm pretty good at this? Like I'm not just someone who sings around casually that like I I've, I've got some talent. Did that moment ever did you ever have that realization to the point where you're like I want to go to high school for this? I mean, that's a whole other thing I want to talk about in a second too. <laughs> I mean, I think I always was very insecure about everything, but like, sure. uh, especially about, you know, uh, fun talents or whatever. And I would only like sing with my closest friends in middle school. I had a couple friends that like, we would like, uh, sing the Frozen soundtrack and like, uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah. and I think they were very supportive of me. So I was kind of like, Oh, am I, am I, uh, thanks. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I guess I, uh, when I, I mean, I sang, I think in front of the class for the first time in like my sophomore, sophomore year of high school. Yeah. And, um, like my class was really supportive of me and that was like shocking for me. Cause I had never really, uh, let myself sing in front of anybody <laughs> but besides my closest friends. Um, so I guess uh, my class and my teachers being supportive of me was very, uh, very helpful and wonderful to experience. <laughs> you really are Suzu, aren't you? You have this amazing talent <laughs> oh, that you God. don't want to show anybody. And it's, <laughs> I, I, if, if you had the ability, I mean, has, have you ever been interested to do something like virtual reality or like VR chat and perform in that capacity and do it anonymously? <laughs> Did that ever like come to your mind? Oh God. No, I mean, my brother always plays like this VR game when he, where he goes around, he kind of trolls people. <laughs> and I just like watch and he's like, sing. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to sing. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's great. So, and another thing too, and this is kind of, I think, Maybe it's, I know it's very specific in New York City because there's the school you went to, which is the, I'm sorry, it's the Performing Arts High School of the, what is it, what is the proper uh, name of it? Professional Performing Arts High School. Professional Performing Arts High School. And then there's also like LaGuardia High School, yeah. right? Which also is a very performance-based high school. Um, I grew up in Jersey and those things might have exist. Well, I grew up in New York and then my family moved to Jersey. But the idea of an art school where I was growing up, it just like, not only was it not on my radar, I don't, I don't necessarily know if they did exist. I probably would have had to commute into the city to do right. something like what you're doing. And maybe that's the case for a lot of other people who don't live in a major city. So. So, like, the idea of picking a career path that early um, yeah. in high school, in a way, or at least, like, something you're very interested in, I, th I find fascinating. What, um, so at that point, did you say, like, I like singing, I want to do this as a career to the fact that you went to, like, you majored in musical theater in high school? Did you think you, like, d did Broadway interest you at the time? Did you want to be on Broadway? What inspired that huge decision at that age? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was I I became like a huge fan of Broadway while I was in a very academic middle school. Yeah. Um, And like I would watch the Broadway dot com vlogs of like Lindsay Mendez as Elphaba and like stuff like that. And I yeah. would um kind of follow uh, accounts that had to do with Broadway and stuff like that. And um, I was like, this is what I love to do. And again, my friends at the time also loved it. Um, So we kind of all bonded with our musical theater love mm -hmm. um and my best friend was was going to that high school so i was like i gotta go there <laughs> ah okay that makes a lot more sense then that's kind of how it was for me and and my friends when we did college because again the high school experience wasn't the same but i i feel that's always a very interesting moment in in your adolescence when you have a group of friends and i'm assuming you guys are very close where everybody's going to go off and do these separate things are their own things and you have to make a decision am i gonna go and join them or or join them because i want to do this as well or do i want to go right. somewhere else to experience something different what yeah. was that whole high school experience like did you feel like it was better because you had a group of friends that you were going with or was it did you feel like all right maybe i'm i'm doing something that's comfortable and i should have broken out of my shell a, a little bit more well for me the um idea of going to like a performing uh art school was really scary because again i was like really 
uh, introverted and, like, not used to uh, performing all the time. Yeah. Um, and, like, this school, it was like, you must perform every week. And, like, good luck. You know what I mean? So it was it was really stressful. Um, and then for a time, I kind of, it was so overwhelming that I, like, I stopped enjoying it. Huh. Um, but then uh, within, like, maybe three years, like, I started to enjoy it again, <laughs> closer yeah. to the end of high school. Um, because, I don't know, performing just became more appealing and fun to me um, than it was initially when I was battling, kind of, like, feeling closed off. Ah. Uh. Um, but it was helpful to have my my best friend there <laughs> yeah i yeah i i didn't have any i i wound up having the route where all my friends went to Rutgers university oh. and i went to monmouth university at the time which was two schools in jersey and i was kind of like i felt that alone navigating this new world by myself thing which was exciting and scary at the same time what was what was the the thing that happened between i guess year one and three what was it specifically for you that you weren't finding enjoyment as much anymore in whatever it is you were doing that's a good question i i you know i'm not even that sure i think it might have just been like an anxiety thing of like sure. it's too stressful to do this all the time um and especially when it's like sometimes it would be it, it's very specific and like difficult material all the time mm. um and like i don't know getting up in front of people was hard for me for a while mm. So. Do you feel like that helped you combat? Did you have like a stage fright? Was that something that you were dealing with and that helped combat yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, it was uh, eventually just became like exposure therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it's like you got to do it or you're going to fail. Yeah. Um, and I feel like even today, like I, I look back on that time that was so difficult because I was so nervous all the time being like put on the spot for all these classes and stuff. Um, I'm like, wow, now I feel like. I can do it whenever because mm. I was doing it like to to no end mm. <laughs> like in high school. Um so, you know, it was very painful for a long time, but now it it kind of paid off, I think. <laughs> yeah, gosh, trial by fire and, and yeah. the, the repetition of it certainly I think will have its effect for better or for worse on some people. <laughs> yeah. What was what was the curriculum like? Was it more music since you were musical theater, was it more singing based or did you have some acting classes? Like what was the classes that the the school was providing for you and did they have a separate track that was acting or was it only musical theater? Yeah, they had an acting track and, like, a dance track and a vocal track, um, but that was more, like, classical vocal. Mm. Um, and so musical theater, we had acting classes and singing classes and dance classes every week um, from, like, one thirty to 3.30. So we would do academics at the beginning of the day, and then we would um, do our arts by the end of the day. So it's kind of like a mini conservatory in a way, half conservatory. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. That's because I, I went to NYU and we had a similar thing where I think we had studio, what they called, you know, studio, which your acting classes and all your arts classes. It's not the traditional sense where a lot of people go to like Juilliard and I think it's five days a week. That's all you're doing. Yeah. There's no academic <laughs> classes involved. NYU, you have to still do your. Uh, basic academics and then half of the a little bit more than I think half of the week you're doing your right. acting dance and movement and musical theater so that's really interesting that you I, I was there an anxiety that you had being in this school that you were no longer enjoying the process was the anxiety making you kind of not necessarily resent or hate like what it is that you thought that you loved but was it more like things were just technical and you couldn't necessarily do it or there was like you know the whole social structure of getting up in front of your peers and wondering about if they think I'm good or I'm bad and the, like the, the, sort of speak the drama of, of high school and life that exists for kids at that age yeah. what what was can you identify what a little bit of um, that fear might have been um, in not only just the singing part, but just where your your desire to perform was becoming. Like I said, is it uh, did did you start finding like I you weren't liking what it was you anymore until the right material came along? Mm, that's interesting. I mean, 
I think sometimes I just would get in my head and get in my own way. Yeah. Um, just because, like, the discomfort of being perceived <laughs> was, like, too much for me. Mm -hmm. um, and getting a grade on, like, uh, how well you performed can also, like, kind of mess with your mind a little sure. bit. Sure. Um, so I kind of was stressed out about that. Isn't that a really weird thing that you can... That's something that is so subjective, like art yeah, and music. Yeah, yeah. You, they can put a number and say whether this is good yeah. or bad. Yeah. <laughs> how how did they grade you? Did they grade you based on technical notes, like whether you hit a certain amount of notes, or how did that how did that grade get? A, do you know how they evaluated that? Let me see. Um, I mean, we would get notes and stuff like after class and everything, and I think. You know, it was also based on preparedness. Like, if you didn't know your lines, like, uh, you're not going to get a good grade. Um, but if you if you really commit and if you really, you know, show that you worked on it, I feel like they would give mm, you a better grade. That and, makes sense. Yeah. What about the acting portion of things? Did that – were you finding that you enjoyed the acting classes the more, the same, or less? And how did you feel about your skill as – an actor and did you ever separate like the fact that you were a singer and an actor or were they both kind of the same thing like musical theater has both of those elements did you did you combine those in your mind or were they kind of separate in where your skill sets were honestly i feel like they were kind of separate mm -hmm. um i loved my um my acting teachers throughout uh high school um and they were they were like crazy and like wonderful and like very supportive um, and, you know, uh, so I kind of acting like felt more because if acting felt less technical to me, hmm. so music kind of scared me more when you have to like belt all these musical theater numbers, which yeah. I was not prepared to do. <laughs> like I would try. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, I think acting, I felt more freedom in terms of the classes and then when I would come home and, like, write my own songs, it would, like, make more sense for me. Um, though I love, like, musical theaters and ballads and songs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're definitely... Sir I mean, for me, I same like what you were just saying. I separated them in a way because I actually... There's, it's a very weird thing, and I think I'm curious to see how you feel about it. I've never really considered myself a singer. Like, I'm an actor who can sometimes sing. That's mm -hmm. more of the way that I would... Like, I've, I've been paid professionally to sing in projects, and I've done... Right. like. But the anxiety that I experience, maybe that's what's tied to it, is like whenever I have to sing, I feel like there's a different anxiety because mm -hmm. it's... Um, it's like a lot on you and it's like less it's less about the story like i feel like yeah. as an actor sometimes you can hide a little bit uh, behind the story and the character whereas the singing it's like what do you have to offer with your skill set and what you bring to it did you have a similar feeling about that or do you have um less anxiety now or more anxiety now about one or the other or do you feel um similar just about about performing mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I think now, like, like since Belle, I gained a lot of confidence with singing because she's this, like, songstress or whatever. And, like, yeah. I feel so lucky to have been able to, you know, perform those, like, beautifully written songs um, in that movie. Um, so I feel, I feel like Belle gave me a sense of confidence that I didn't have before, which has, like, bled into everything else I do so singing is like uh, felt much uh, much more I feel more at home doing it now yeah. than I did before when I had much less experience doing it um, but yeah when did you start auditioning at what age were you auditioning at I think I had my first audition at like 14 and it was for this musical called Runaways which uh -huh. was off Broadway um, at New York City Center. I don't know why I'm like having trouble remembering. This. <laughs> but I Feels was like 14. a lifetime ago. It was a lifetime ago. <laughs> um, and that was like the first thing I ever worked on. Um, and, and that was your first audition? Yes, I got really lucky. My wow. mom also was in the original production, so there's a little bit of nepotism. But we okay. Don't really need to talk about that. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> my mom, when she was 11, she was in the, the Broadway version of this musical. Okay. 
So. And so did they know that as you were going into audition for this? Or do you, was it just like you were the right person and it just so happened? Because I'm assuming... I think they knew. They knew? Okay. <laughs> I did think it, they did. Did she help you, though, in terms of preparing? And did she have any insight to like, okay... Wait, did you play the same character or no? No, it was. it's like an ensemble musical. Okay. So like people kind of had different roles and tracks and it was kind of like all over the place. Mm-hmm. But my mom sang a song called like Lullaby from Baby to Baby and I had like a one of the choruses in that song. Mm-hmm. And it it was like split up between three other people. So I sang like a part of her song. Oh, well, that that's kind of I mean, that's cool just knowing that yeah. you got to do something similar, but it's <laughs> I I think that it's it's also cool that you got to do your own thing as well. So it's not like yeah. you're replicating a performance that <laughs> your right. mom yeah, did yeah. in its entirety. How yeah. how involved or influential or so, I, I, I'm assuming very supportive. But in, since your your parents were both actors, are they very involved through your process of of auditioning now and and getting jobs? And are are they giving you insight that maybe your acting teachers aren't like how what is the dynamic been since you have parents who are in the same career path well i mean i feel like since i i sway more towards music we kind of like have a a different like mindset though i love acting Mm -hmm. um kind of my career is leaning towards the music side um so they they kind of like aren't involved in that area, but yeah. they are like relentlessly supportive of me. Um, and like anytime I have an audition, like my mom will read the lines with me and stuff. Um, but like throughout my life, like they're very they're very chill about acting. They're all, they're like uh, all these methods and stuff. They kind of are like ah, just pretend. Yeah, <laughs> pretend, Kylie. Like it's not a big deal. Like. <laughs> They kind of that's their kind of outlook on it, yeah. which takes a lot of pressure off. Um, so that's helpful. <laughs> I think that's great. I think a lot of people get caught up in like, am I trained in this or am I yeah. producing the right amount of something for this? When I I have coming from a very technical acting background myself, I have as I've gotten older and I've been working on more projects, you wind up saying to yourself throw all of that away and serve whatever it is is in the moment for you and the character a lot of times we think we have to like really do a lot of homework when i think you get a lot more leg room out of saying let me put myself in this scenario and what would i do given these circumstances which is kind of the foundations of acting and then there's little tools sprinkled throughout but if you get so hung up on like okay i'm dealing with this project th- this this moment right now you would use this uh, emotional relation and i have to do right. this activity it's like a lot of that just gets in the way of what could be really authentic and beautiful yeah. and so that's amazing that you have that approach and that your parents kind of encourage that where what about so you you started auditioning at 14 you get this this first job were you auditioning throughout high school or did you take a break while you were in the performance high school I was but it was like very on and off and I think I kind of became less committed to doing it so I kind of wasn't doing it very often Mm -hmm. um again with the like anxiety thing that I was I was going through something (laughs) <laughs> um, and, like, um, but then I just, uh, uh that project, uh, Runaways, uh, like came back two years later. So I did it again at the Delacorte theater in the park for like the public theater. Yeah. Um, and, uh, that was when I was 16. Uh, and we just did that again. Um, and then I didn't work again until I was 19. I did. I had a small part in a, in, a, in the, at the end of a Christmas movie. Okay. Oh, amazing. Okay, listen. And uh, <laughs> I don't speak at all, but I do have a baby, uh, so it's great. Uh, and then I immediately after that got Bell. <laughs> oh my gosh! So wait, when did you graduate? What year? Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah. When did when did Bell? When were you cast as Bell? I was cast as Bell in. Ooh, October 2021. Okay, so you had a little bit of time in between graduation. When did you do the movie? That was before Bell? The uh the movie, yeah, I recorded that in like late August, early September, mm-hmm. and I had like gotten the audition for Bell in like early August, and then I didn't hear back for like until like mid-September. Sure. So I had recorded the uh 
the the movie yeah uh, the christmas movie who is christmas eve is what it's called who is christmas, uh, who is christmas eve okay eve, um, i have like to see this auditions. <laughs> yeah no yeah i'm at the very beginning at the very end <laughs> and you wind up so you i'm not i mean you don't have to spoil it but somehow throughout <laughs> an entire movie a character that never shows up doesn't have a baby and then you do have a baby is that the gist of it <laughs> well it's basically like I am kind of a flashback. I'm okay. Kind of a flashback character, so it starts with like, who's that girl? Like with the with the baby, mm-hmm. and then it ends up, oh, that's the girl with the baby, and this is why. <laughs> so <laughs> ah, it makes sense. Okay, it's a lot simpler than I'm trying to make it out to be. So that's what. So you graduate in 2020. What yeah. I mean, does everybody graduate at the same time? Was it like March, May? I don't know. When is graduation? Uh, it was June. It June. Was June. So Fair like enough. we were mid pandemic, super happy. Having a great time. Oh, wow. That's got to be... Wow. That's actually crazy. I mean, I feel like you're kind of lucky that you got to finish school right before the pandemic really, like, took... Yeah. It, like, shut down in March, though. So I kind of had those, I don't know, like, three or four months months of, like, like, sudden Zoom school and, like, everyone's freaking out. And it was just... Yeah, it was crazy. I was doing a production at the time, too, at my school. Oh, and you so didn't get to do it? Shut it down. Oh, we did like gosh. two performances or something. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. What yeah. was the show? Was it an original thing or were you doing? No, it was Pippin. I played. Oh my gosh! Catherine. Oh, <laughs> I I really can't imagine being in an education like whether it's high school, college, and having everything shut down. I really it's hard for me to imagine what that would be like cuz I even when I I moved out to LA right at the start of 2020. And so like oh. entering into a new city and all these new things right as a pandemic was starting was terrifying enough for me. I couldn't imagine yeah. being like in my formative adolescent years and having yeah. it just be like the the rug ripped out from under you. How did that affect you? pandemic starting and then like in your mind did you have a plan of what you wanted to do after school and then covid comes and did you have to re-strategize or what was what was your plan and then what did your plan become as you graduated i i knew i was i i started liking musical theater again something mm-hmm. i just sort of got it i sort of got into me um and i was having so much fun doing pippin at my school um so i was like i want to audition And I want to start singing and I want to like, you know, do all this stuff. There was like also a cabaret, um, like competition that I entered into that I ended up being one of the, uh, finalists for. And we like eventually performed all together in October in a very socially distanced way. Um, so that kind of was something I was, uh, interested in doing with regarding singing and stuff, but I, you know, I wanted to audition and that kind of went away for a minute yeah and then came back in a very weird dystopian different way yeah Uh, yeah (laughs) not going into places to audition anymore you like that whole element of things just everything was self-tape and even record from home for voiceover um were you going in for a lot of voiceover stuff prior to getting bell or was it kind of selective in what you were going in for it it was mostly like on camera stuff that Mm -hmm. I was going in for. I think I had like maybe one voiceover audition or two before Bell. Yeah. Um, but once I got the like Bell audition, um, like I just like recorded it in my room and I was in Atlanta because my mom was working there and I, I don't know. So that was kind of my, I just got really lucky. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Can you talk me a little bit through that whole process of just getting the audition, seeing the material on the sides? Did you, I don't think, I mean, I definitely didn't get the, like the, the screener for it until actually I didn't even get a screener at all. I had to find it illegally online. That's how I had to watch it. Cause I remember, no, I remember Michael was like, terrible. I remember Michael was like, Oh, you got to watch the, the film. Right. And then I was like, I was like, uh, yeah, but it wasn't sent to me. I had to like find it. And I was like, oh don't worry about it. I, so I, it wound up working out anyway, so it's fine. But okay. what about for you? Did you just receive like the packet of the sides and you saw this character and they just, did you only audition through the acting portion first or was singing included in the first audition? 
Um, it was basically, uh, two scenes, uh, of, like, speaking scenes, and then it was one song. So, they had me sing, because they couldn't release the material yeah. yet, um, they had me sing, uh, Because of You by Kelly Clarkson. Okay. So, I, like, recorded that in the bathroom at my, <laughs> uh, house I was staying at in Atlanta, because I thought, like, reverb was a, uh, it just sounds like I'm in a tin can. But, yeah. But, like, um, <laughs> uh, so I, it was too, like... It was one of the scenes was like Suzu and then the other scene was Belle talking. So mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know, in the sides it was like Belle has more of confidence and Suzu is more awkward. And I guess I saw the um, like the picture of, of Belle um, on the sides and I was like, this is the most gorgeous <laughs> like, <laughs> animation I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and it said she was a singer songwriter. So I was like, sweet, like that sounds like me. And she's awkward or like, you know, scared of everything. And I was like, sick. Um, <laughs> right great. in my wheelhouse right now. Right, right, got it. Yeah, let's go. Um, so, uh, but then I just thought nothing of it. I just kind of was like, that would be cool. But that's never happening. <laughs> so when you recorded it, did you did you feel good about it, or did you just feel like you did your best job and set it and forget it? Kind of the healthy uh, mentality of auditions. I think I I definitely got caught up on the music bit. Like I wanted to really sound good for the singing. Mm-hmm. Um, but for like the the more speaking parts, I was just like, ah, this was, hope it's good. Yeah, <laughs> just, just do it. do what you thought. I mean, it's, I had kind of a similar experience because different than, <laughs> although I had a very similar thing to your experience, mine wasn't singing. Mine was having a normal young guy, like a very innocent, you know, kind of fragile a boy and then having a monster so right, i didn't yeah. have to sing i just had to t- i had to turn from normal kid who's very similar and nervous to beast so that yeah, was yeah. a, d- a you different killed it. You oh, killed it. it was i it, love your performance oh my I gosh thank you it was oh, that's no. the movie i i was a fan from the moment i watched the japanese screener and the second I heard you in the music, like, I I was stunned because, and I probably said this to you in, like, an Instagram DM or something like that, but it is very, it's very rare for, especially an adaptation that's done in English, like a dub, to surpass what is an original thing. And listen... The original Japanese is fantastic. Uh, Nakamura is insane. But but what you bring to it as yourself is just as good, if not better, than an already an amazing performance. And I feel like it's because all of the things you're saying, and I'm curious if you feel this way, because it was so close to home in maybe the way you felt as a person and as a performer, and you just had this talent that was so suited for this material did you feel that when you booked it that like your real life was kind of seeping into this performance at all oh man well first of all thank you again um (laughs) (laughs) and also i mean yeah i when i i first watched the uh the japanese dub uh the japanese the subtitle yes subtitle version um i like watched it in bed and like cried throughout the whole thing um they sent it to me like the week before I was recording. Um, <laughs> and um, I like, I think there were certain scenes where, especially at the beginning, where Suzu, uh, you know, is at school and she's kind of like spaced out and like clearly sad. And I was like, oh my God, like the way they uh, were able to capture that teenage, like, like distress and um, uh, like quiet, uh, pain yeah um so beautifully and so accurately uh i was like wow i really connect with this and if i had been you know about to play Belle and suzu or not like i would have related to her yeah um so i think yeah definitely definitely it felt like um it it, it hit really close to home your performance too is so authentic and real and it's it's kind of what you were saying earlier. It it feels just so honest and natural. And that's one of the things I love so much about it is there's no, there's no push. It feels very, 
contemporary and it feels very what very much what like you might be experiencing if you were in this girl's shoes and from the the material acting wise how much of that did you feel the anxiety of maybe this just being a huge project and you're doing that or how much did was it that you were getting help from direction whether through Michael or Stephanie what was the whole acting process in it for you did you did you feel like you just tapped into what this character was feeling immediately or did it take a little bit to to figure out what it was that they were looking for and what was right for the scene oh yeah um i mean my first day um, I was really, like, I was really scared, and I hadn't gotten a lot of sleep either, so I was, like, I was super on edge, and I didn't know exactly what Suzu, like, sounded like. I don't mm. know how she, like, fit in my voice yet, um, so I was, like, kind of, it was too breathy. I was too, I was too, like, genuinely afraid to, like, do a <laughs> great performance or a, a good performance, so I was, like, really kind of holding back. Um, but Michael, um, Sintra Nicholas, the, uh, dude who directed the dub, like, he was with me that whole process, and he was, like, he had to constantly be, like, you're gonna be okay, and you're gonna be fine, yeah. like, relax, um, and I think he helped majorly, um, make me feel comfortable, and make me feel like, uh, I could do this, yeah. um, so that was very helpful. Yeah, Michael is one of the the best actors, directors that I've worked with. He really makes you feel comfortable and will he it's never like this isn't working. Let's um like you're not getting it right. It's like try he's just constantly for me even was throwing out different suggestions on how we can maybe get to a different performance. And not that one was right or wrong. It's yeah. just like why don't you try it like this and why don't we see what happens if this and then ultimately what happens in the edit is what happens in the edit, but I I, I felt like there were so many different versions of what I was able to bring, and I was glad that they were able to make it cohesive and yeah. uh, line up into what is, is done at the end. Did you feel, because this is, again, the, the pressures of, uh, I know you had this whole thing where you're meeting with the team, too, because they were involved in the, the music. What was that anxiety like? Because like, this is your first big thing, and it's not just, again, like a... a someone's first job specifically in like anime dubbing you're it's never so like there's never so many people involved it's often like you work with the studio you do your lines and you leave this for you is like you're doing some meetings of and you're doing recording for the soundtrack and you're also doing behind the scenes stuff what was that interaction like working with the japanese team and meeting them and what their expectations were can you break that a little bit down in terms from from getting to end sure yeah i mean so recording the music took a week um and they came for that whole week they were there um and that was at the end of production so me and michael were just alone in the studio for like three weeks straight like yeah. from all day it was like so intense um and then it was like the last week it was uh michael ludwig taisei and taka and our uh engineer matthew um that we all like worked at power station um this studio in midtown mm -hmm. and um it's like a big like, music studio where all the like broadway stuff is recorded and a bunch of famous people have recorded there so i was like oh my god <laughs> um, <laughs> uh and uh working with the japanese composers was so insane like they were so truly like genuinely kind and genuinely like supportive of me and like tried to make me feel uh, at home and not as scared and uh i mean throughout this whole production it felt very collaborative like they they wanted to hear my input um and they wanted uh like ludwig kept saying like we want to make this like your this is your songs now like this yeah. is your music this is your version or whatever and um i mean hearing behind the scenes stories from them was so cool um at my like shows currently i like kind of tell my audience like what they told me yeah because <laughs> i just think it's so interesting their process for writing this music and stuff um but it was so it was so much fun yeah what so my fiance and i we listened to the soundtrack 
all the time. Like it's part of like playlists and stuff. And it sounds very corny for me to say that because I'm a part of the film, but I had no music. So anybody who judges me for it, I listen, I'm not like, there's no, I don't sing any songs. So (laughs) it's just great to like, it's such good music. And I'm curious for you as a singer. And I know you're saying there was like a bit of collaboration involved. Where do you, and Allie was asking me this question is, as a singer in your instrument, how do you decide, or maybe in this process, how did you decide whether you were going to use your head voice, your chest voice, a mix? Like for you as a performer, how was that uh, incorporated? Because there's a lot of difficult music in this, and there's a lot of belty stuff. So, like specifically with belting too, is that like, did they want a lot of you to use your chest voice, or is that a lot of your head, or is that a, a, more of a mix? Technically, mm-hmm. in your instrument, how did that? Affect like apply to this project that it requires so much belting very difficult belting yeah um i think depending on like musical swells and stuff and sometimes like bell was animated to like it like looks like she's belting at certain times so i was like i'm gonna belt there yeah or sometimes they would uh the composers would encourage me like you know what hit this a little stronger actually and like build up you know this part um Uh, so it was kind of like their input plus what I just felt, felt right. Yeah. Um, I was like a big fan of the, um, the Japanese music, uh, the, the, the album they came out with originally. And then I, I, you know, like before I started working on it, I was like, I have to stop listening to this because I want to not copy her. Yeah. Um, so I was like, uh, and absolutely, she definitely influenced me and I like tried to honor her performance too, but also like make it my own. Um, so it was a lot of just, I guess, feeling it out. Yeah. And it's, it was probably a, I mean, you said it was how many weeks did you record the music? Just one. One week, but that's still a lot of time to, and I'm sure you were doing your own research, like you said beforehand. To and, and were you were you singing it? Uh, were you singing it in Japanese when you had been listening to it? And then when you got into the studio, were you singing it in English? Like, is that what your <laughs> listening process was like, or did they give you the English lyrics all, right away? Well, they they honestly it was pretty much right away that they gave me um, like instrumental tracks and English lyrics. Uh-huh. Um, and so I like. I would listen. I stopped listening to Japanese. I was like, going on a like, we're not listening to this anymore. Yeah. It's so beautiful. I can't. <laughs> I can't listen to it anymore. Um, and so I would listen to the instrumental tracks all the time. And sometimes I just wouldn't even sing it out loud, but I would just think in my head, like, how would I, like, how am I going to sing this in the booth mm. in English? Um, and Ludwig Forsell translated the lyrics, um, and he did it so well. Like, I don't understand, like. How it first of all matched the lip flaps. How did he do that? And like made sense. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it, it was just incredible. So I I don't know. I guess I I just kind of would walk around the city and like think <laughs> how am I gonna <laughs> sing this? <laughs> well, that makes me wonder. I mean, there are so many beautiful like there are just so many beautiful and and musically amazing songs in this movie. Which of the songs? was the most difficult for you and it doesn't necessarily have to be def- like technically difficult which was the most because like I was saying Bell as a as a singer she is amazing so which which of the songs was the most difficult for you when you were recording it maybe it, it's not technical but it could have been oh honestly all of them were really hard uh-huh. <laughs> but um i mean the first day i went into recording i decided to sing they let me pick um, like which one I wanted to start with. And I thought, because Belle is like entering the world of you, um, I thought I would sing Gales of Song first. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did that. And when I, I eventually heard the initial like recording back, I was like, I think it could be better. I think mm. it could be stronger. And I told Michael and, and I was like, but I don't want to like ask. He was like, no, ask them. <gasps> they will listen to you. Like, <laughs> go for it. And so I like asked if I could like do that one again. And like, they were like, okay. And, um, so that final like take is mostly like that take is in the movie, um, which I recorded on the final day. Wow. Of pr- production. So it was like I kind of uh, started out 
in my, like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing mode, and then was like, okay, after this week of recording, I think I can revisit this, and I think I can, like, do it better. And then that one's in the movie. So. Wow. So do you think that that had to do with your confidence, like, and, and the nervousness maybe in the beginning? Because when how do you identify something being stronger in terms of your performance? Um, I, I think it really does have to do with confidence. Um, I think I kind of, when I'm, when I'm super nervous or something, I just like, it's kind of like a, a, a bodily reaction of like, uh, like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, and I think you can hear, you can physically hear it, you know, in the first like recording. Um, and then I think just after that week of, of, feeling like I finally could do this, um, I just think I, it, my mindset changed and that like really helped. <laughs> and that's such an awesome gift that they were able to listen to you and say, yeah, like, let's give her another shot at this because clearly whatever you've done, they must have liked. I can't imagine them saying like, yeah, we're just going to move on from this if it wasn't good. So <laughs> that's so awesome that they trusted you to say like, oh, she's got more in the tank. Let's give this another shot and to, to go at it. Because I think especially that's a great lesson for a lot of people who are working professionally in any capacity, but especially voice acting and a lot of times in doing music is that it's not always a very lengthy process. I mean, for you, you said it was multiple weeks, but still, like, like you did the music in one week for this huge movie. It's like one week when you really think about it, it's not that much time. And I've definitely been in moments where you do, and I'm curious for you on the acting part of it, you do a take or two or three, and then that's often it for like a section, then you move on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are afraid to say, hey, can I, get it? Can I just try that one yeah. more time? So yeah. it was so cool that you... Um, not only asked that of Michael, the director, but that they were like, absolutely. Because sometimes they'll be like, no, we don't have enough time. And that's it. Right. What you did is, is final. Yeah. yeah. What What about the entire... Oh, my gosh. My cat has been screaming. I don't know if you've heard this. No. Um, oh, my gosh. He's, he's <laughs> trying to break down a door. Not this door because my door is open. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> anyway, um, what, what about the... like? Behind the scenes portion of the movie, did you record that stuff separately because you did those kind of live performances? Did was that separate than when you were in that first week? Oh, the oh the behind the scenes, like the DVD extra yeah. footage. Yeah, I think I record uh, Gales of Song on that, and when I'm recording Gales of Song, that is literally me recording Gales of Song. That that, that the day take. you did? Oh my gosh! That last take, yeah. And I totally like I crack on the end of that. Uh, uh, like, I, hi, I'll be me, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. and um, I think I like saluted and like that salute is in the behind the scenes. But like the initial first huge chunk of that take is, is in the movie what? and in the behind the scenes. So <laughs> did, was, did that add some anxiety to you to know that they were going to do that? Did they tell you that up front that they like, hey, you know, one day we're going to record you recording a song or did you not know about it? Yeah, they did say in advance, like, hey, we're going to come in, and um, John and Jorge from G-Kids um, came and recorded us. And then there was another day, uh, maybe two weeks later, where we all went to this studio called G uh, Dimension 70, way downtown, and um, we all, like... All, all got together there. The Japanese composers have had left at this point. Uh -huh. um, but we all got together to record a live acoustic version of Gales of Song. And we did some like interviews that day too. Mm. How, did they know you played guitar? Or did that information reveal itself after you had booked the role already? Um, I mean, I think they did know that I played like guitar and piano because... I, I had like posted a couple YouTube videos like the year before uh -huh. where of me like singing original songs on the piano and guitar and stuff. And that was actually uh, some of the material Michael used to present me to the Japanese team and to G kids and stuff, apparently. Uh -huh. um, so I think they were aware. <laughs> were you were you like, oh, my God, why did they show that? Or did you were you happy that they had showed that? Because that's clearly what booked you the job. Oh man, I'm real. I'm very grateful that they that they uh, liked that and showed that. Um, I think it was also because um, uh, Kaho Nakamura, like she plays piano and she's a, a, a live musician. She she sings and she does concerts and stuff. And I yeah. think she was discovered at a concert, something like that. Like it was an amazing 
coincidence thing. And so it was kind of like, oh, this girl on YouTube who plays music yeah. in her room. <laughs> it was like that sort of story, I guess. I don't know. Well, that's kind of the story of the movie in a way. And I think it's really inspiring for anybody who's similar, who maybe is dealing with anxiety and, and you know, wants to make music and put it out online. And, and you never really know what that can lead to. And there's things like TikTok and Instagram where yeah. YouTube, you can record something, put it out in the world and somehow, some way it can just gain, like gain insane traction and change somebody's life. And and right. that's kind of what happens for Bell, and in a similar way for you. Not that the music did that for you, but it got you this role where you're experiencing um, a very similar uh, path in your life. What is, what has life been like post this movie? Now ha- has has it changed your kind of trajectory of what you want to do? Has it helped in any way? Has it influenced maybe? Um, a, a, you know whether you want to pursue music more or acting, like what has the life been like after everything with Bell has kind of run it? I mean, you're still, obviously there's conventions and things like that, which are really amazing, but what are kind of the next steps and and what is the trajectory now? Oh man. Um, I mean, this movie has uh, like absolutely changed my life. I mean, uh, for the better, and uh, I just, like, I could not be more grateful. Like, I just, I, I can't believe that uh, it has been such a uh, an incredible, like, thing in my life. Like, yeah. I just, I'm so um, honored and, you know, grateful to be a part of it. And, um, I mean, it really has allowed me, uh, you know, to grow a bit of an audience. Um, and, like, you know, I think my, my passion is is truly music and writing and, um, singing and songwriting and all that stuff. Um, though I love acting too, and I'm so open to doing that as well. Mm -hmm. I think like I couldn't live without the music though. Um, but, uh, to be able to do shows and like concerts and stuff like that has really kind of, uh, shown me like what I want in life. And it's like, I, I mean, I get, uh, like the mo- the best adrenaline rush when I'm doing those things. Like I, I'm the happiest when I'm doing those, uh, those shows and like getting to meet all the people that, that come to those shows. And I think, you know, even after bell, like there were some times where I was really unsure what the hell to do. Like mm. I did not know, like there were, you know, there was a couple months this year where I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Like I, like, uh, uh, with this opportunity, because sometimes when it, you know, you're in the throes of like a, an amazing opportunity, you're like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. Like, it can be very, it, it was very scary at a couple of times this year where I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Um, but I guess, you know, with the, the support of quite a few different people, I was able to understand that uh, kind of fighting for my passions and, uh, doing these shows was was really important to me it's it's amazing i really want to see you play live so i hope that i am either in new york or wherever you are at a point in time i'm trying to book one in la oh please please i mean you would sell out easily out here it would be (laughs) it'd be easy so that's yeah we should talk about that because there's maybe like even through a convention or something i feel like people would love to to see that um i mean when i went to anime expo out here I saw so many Bell cosplays, you know? It yes, was it was I so saw fun. Your pictures. I was like, oh my god, I wanted to go so bad. I I'm I'm gonna make them take me this year. Yeah, right? Like We're demand. Gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you would do so well and it would be so fun and I think it's a very what you said is very honest and very interesting, you know, where you have this opportunity. How do you navigate using it? How do you leverage it? How do you find your own path within the success of something else? And I know I saw that you're performing some unreleased singles. So is your are you like is the intention to write a I don't really know the world of music that well. Like, do you write an EP or I see a lot of people like dropping singles now. Like what is the, right, what right. is the right thing to do as an artist now is, do you make an album anymore? Does that ever happen anymore? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I right? hope so. I hope. Um, well, I mean, I've like written an album and I recently like feel like I finally finished it after like way too long. Um, but I'm working on trying to get that, uh, created. Um, so I can, you know, release 
my, because I always start my shows, I'm like, hi, I'm going to sing, like, my unreleased religion, uh, religionals? What? <laughs> originals. originals, okay. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> my unreleased originals um, will hopefully become released originals soon. Mm. I've, like, written an, an album of songs, so I hope to do that definitely this year. <laughs> and what is the genre of that music that you are doing on your own album? Honestly, I do have, like, trouble putting my finger on that. Uh, I guess it kind of is like it's singer songwriting, but it's also uh, like indie rock and alternative. Like just it's just whatever. I don't know what it is. That's I even better because like then you're it. yourself uh, you're self defined, and that's I think what makes things even more interesting. I think, I mean, obviously having comparable things, most people can say like, oh, that's like this, but it's so cool to kind of forge your own path and take inspiration from a bunch of things. What are what are your inspirations then as an artist? I know you said musical theater and stuff, but what as like in what you're doing as a musician, what are your inspirations? Oh yeah, I mean, in like a storytelling sense, definitely musical theater is like the the arc of of a musical um, inspires me a lot. Um, and uh, Billy Joel for sure. Like, oh, I love. Billy. I got to see him at Madison Square Garden. I cried the whole time. <laughs> I cried the whole time. He's amazing. And, yeah, he is incredible. And then. Um, a more like modern artist I, I I listen to all the time is Phoebe Bridgers. I think she's just insane, and I I can't wait for more music from her and from Boy Genius, the band she's in. And um, also, the reason I started writing music when I was sixteen or so um, was Twenty One Pilots, uh -huh. which is my favorite band of all time. Um, and like I had two friends at the time who were very into 21 Pilots and they introduced me to them and their ability to storytell in each song and uh, them covering, you know, topics like depression and anxiety and all of those sort of things um, was super inspiring to me. So they're the reason, like, I, I started writing music at all. Mm. Um, so when I was in Columbus, like, last week, I was like, oh my god, they're from Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> did you go, did, were they playing by any chance or no? No, they no. weren't, I wish. That'd oh be crazy. God. But I was near, I was like, uh, the convention center was right down the street from one of the a, like a huge arena so i was like they definitely have been around here i can smell the same air they've smelled <laughs> yes. and yeah 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 <laughs> that's yeah, really exactly. cool and i i i'm really excited to hear what's in store for you because i'm i guess when uh someone's a singer songwriter do you have the is it the goal or where do you stand on like would you would you rather have a band accompanying you do you feel more comfortable playing acoustic and like or at the piano what is your vision for yourself as an artist is it the support of a band or is it you and your guitar and your piano and 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 performing that way that's interesting i've only ever performed by myself um so like all of my solo concerts and uh, throughout the whole year have been just me and my guitar and my piano and my ukulele for one of the songs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just me up there most of the time. Maybe like someday, uh, maybe once I've released music or something, like yeah. I'll have more of a support to kind of bring the songs completely together. But I, I just, you know, I just play my, by myself and I... I love playing by myself. <laughs> That's, I mean, listen, it's got to be so empowering, and it's also, it, it, it allows for less scheduling conflicts, I feel like, too. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm available, so I'm going to record yeah, today. Go. Yeah, <laughs> So you said that you're trying to finalize this um album right now is that that is that is the thing that's preventing that just you getting into the studio and saying like this is the way I want it to be or is there still things that you're working on from a, a, a songwriting perspective like is it finished in in the integrity of the music perspective or is it just like you haven't pieced them all together to be a delivered piece it's like I've, I've like finished writing it mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like a it's like a it's first of all like a where do I like? Where do I go to do this? Mm -hmm. I, I'm like not, you know, well versed in the music world. Uh -huh. um, I just kind of am like a girl with these songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would love to get into like the studio and work with someone on on like you know make like, like uh, fleshing it out and yeah, like, like um, a producer finalizing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. 
that's something I'm working towards. That's awesome. I'm I'm so excited. And I'm so excited for you. And like I said, I really just feel like you are so, like, even with the success of Bell, I just know there's so, like, it. the, the climb is going to be so amazing for oh, you. That's so nice. I really, really believe it. I wouldn't say it if if I didn't sincerely believe that. And it's just from an outside perspective, it's like it's just super exciting. And I, I, you are so talented, and I see you enjoying every second of it. Like I've watched some of the YouTube videos of you performing and even doing the bell songs. It's like you're having the time of your life doing this, and I'm I'm just so happy for you. It's like you couldn't have been Thank cast you more so perfect. Much. It is my, it is my absolute pleasure. I I would love to round this out by asking two more questions if you don't mind. Sure. One would be outside of producing an album and I guess it can be in the music space or acting space like what would be like the dream project to be working on having gone through what you've gone through now like what if you could pick the next thing you did professionally that wasn't like you recording this album and making a music video or whatever the next steps are I don't know I'm not a musician yeah. what yeah, would yeah, you yeah. what would you write down to your agents like I want to do this what would it be mm. oh. oh god I mean I would love to do, like, another movie or something, like, uh, that would be so fun, or, like, a musical, or just, I'm just open to, to anything, really, I, I just, I just want to enjoy life, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> YOLO, yeah, heck yeah, yeah, YOLO, it's great, um, <laughs> I mean, with Belle, it felt like such a, uh, such a, a, a perfect project where I got to do, like, uh, the things that I'm passionate about in, so if there was something else like that, yeah, um, that maybe, maybe wasn't animated this time. I don't know. Um, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. What, so I, it, what about if you were doing a musical? Like what, um, uh, is there a musical that you would like to do that has been already in production? Like if they were to do a revival, like what would be the musical you would pick to do, uh, off Broadway or on Broadway? If, if you could like, whether it's in, whether it's something close to what you're really good at, or maybe it's a stretch, like what would it, what would be the one that you'd pick? I mean, I've always loved Wicked. I would, like, kind of kill to play, like, Glinda or something. Um, I could totally see that. Or Elf, but whatever. Like, I'll do whatever. <laughs> um, I love David Schwartz. Like, I am available. Um, <laughs> I'm available. Call me. Yeah. Um, I'll do anything for you. And then, <laughs> um, I mean, I guess it's kind of musical as, like, uh, where I could sing, but also like do comedy, like Once Upon a Mattress vibes. Oh or yeah, something like that. I loved being um, Catherine and Pippin. I think I'm too young to play it in a professional production. I would right say now. so. But maybe when I'm like, I don't know, way older. Yeah, that would be fun to do again. <laughs> <laughs> what are some fun? Yeah, like Once Upon a Mattress. What was that? Was that the um? What was that musical that was just on Broadway with um? Uh, actually, a friend of mine is now playing it. Uh, 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 Beanie Feldstein was the lead in oh, it. Oh, Funny Girl? Yeah, like you think you could do something like that? Yeah, oh my god, I would love to. I'm not sure they would choose me, but I, I saw that with her and it was really great. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, the the Julie Benko I went to school with, she's fantastic. Yeah. She took over. Oh, you went to school with her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's that's she's so amazing cool. and I'm so happy for her. But that's that's I, I, I would love to see you in a Broadway musical or a movie that has singing. Like maybe you can do the I mean, they've done Mamma Mia now how many times, but like, right, you know, yeah, whatever like... the version of that is for this new um uh, bring what about not bring it on gosh uh, uh pitch perfect would you want to do like a pitch perfect oh oh i'm so down let's go yeah and i'm down to do like projects without saying too like i'll i'll just act yeah <laughs> like, and you're great you at know? it so i would love to see <laughs> that too <laughs> well i really look forward to all that i hope that your your agents are pitching the hell out of you because you are just uh, really uh, somebody who is going to really kick butt in these next couple of years and i'm so excited for it uh this one of the questions here, the last question here, which is kind of the basis for the show, is I like to ask people about experiences they've had in their life that have influenced them. It doesn't have to be professional. It can be like it, you know, it could be advice that somebody gave you working with another actor or a director, or a parent, a friend, or it can just be something in life. You know, when you were walking down the street and you saw this and it 
changed your life. Essentially, the question is, was there an experience that you either went through or experienced? It doesn't have to be depressing. It could be happy where it had an effect on you and it stayed with you. Oftentimes, I like to ask people, like, what's that first thought that comes to your mind when you're like, yeah, that experience had an influence on me? Something that you feel sharing might uh, benefit uh, some of the listeners here. Um, that's such a good question. I'm like blanking on an answer. All right. I'll give um, you one of mine and then maybe that'll help you because I've okay. said so many in, in the guests, but let me think of like one of, one of the most recent ones. Okay. Here's a good one. And it just came to the, the front of my mind. One time when I was working on a production and I won't name names here, but, uh, I was working on a production and it was like BB and this is maybe helpful for you in some capacity, but I remember I was working with a studio on something. It was like one of my first like big things. And I was like, all right, how do I, how do I stay on these people's good graces? Like I, I really, I just worked with this company. I want to work with them again. What do I do? And I remember uh, just kind of in, in fun conversations, I was like, Oh, I'll get them a gift. I'll get this, I'll get this company a gift. You know what I mean? And, there's going to be two parts to this story. One, So the director just out of nowhere, I was like, I had already ordered like this cake to send to the studio or whatever, to send to, to, to the director here. And he was like, you know, one thing that really annoys me is when people get me gifts and I already like ordered this gift to get, and I'm oh like, I'm like, God. I'm like, I've already placed the purchase. But his explanation right. for why he like was like, don't get gifts is because he's like, the second that this becomes a transactional relationship outside of what we've done already, I start to feel like I now owe you something because you have spent your own money on me in something outside of what we've done. Uh, he's like, you can keep up to date with me. All of these great things. I hope to work with you again in the future. I just don't want people to feel like now that you've created a, a monetary transaction with me, that there is some hope that that will help you get a job or that, uh, you know, anything else leading to something else. So that really stuck with me. And then I had a similar experience where I was talking to someone who runs a studio and they're like, you know, somebody, someone so just got me a gift or they like they mm -hmm. sent like something over and I really appreciated it because um, it let me know that they valued our time together, that it was like there was a very heartfelt card. So the point of this is neither of those t two things are right or wrong. There's not one track of, of what you should or shouldn't do. I really feel like it's you feel out each moment in life and you try to take advantage of whatever you can show appreciation when you can. And if somebody doesn't like something, then that's fine. If somebody does like something, something then fine you do what's right for you in your heart don't like live your life based on what you think you should or shouldn't do just do what's right and it might work and it might not but that's life in a nutshell right we can never yeah. always predict the outcome so i always found it kind of funny the two parallels of those extremes um and it was just helpful for me to like let go of okay i have to do this every single time that this happens and i really got to make sure everybody knows that i appreciate them like sometimes it's the experience that we had is enough so um i don't know if that sparked anything for you or maybe it made you more confused <laughs> no that was great um <laughs> i mean i remember just like there's two things that came to me and one of them was while working on bell um i was very caught up like in my own head and stuff and um, something Michael said to me was like, there's no mistakes. Like, there's no mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just trying and you're just doing it. Like, don't, he would tell me, like, don't stop. If you mess up, don't stop. Don't stop talking. Keep going. Um, and just kind of having that support of, like, you are not doing this wrong. You're just trying uh, kind of stuck with me, like, throughout this whole year. I've been trying to, I kind of give myself that talk in my head, like, no, just keep going. Yeah. It's fine. Um, experience life. And <laughs> um, then there was another a time when I was working on uh, that musical Runaways uh, where I was I was very shy at the time. I, you know, kind of felt like maybe nobody saw me. Mm. Um, and I kind of also didn't want to be seen. I was like, you know, a little bit uh, really stuck in my, my shell. Mm. Um, but the director of that musical who was uh named sam pinkleton um he was assigning all of us different things to like do while like other characters were doing their scenes and stuff and you know uh it was like uh some of the other characters would be like gossiping with each other and like you know whatever mm -hmm. but um sam was like and you kylie like you like to write and you're, you know, you, you're kind of quiet, but you have, like, a way to, like, express yourself. So how about you sit on the side of the stage and you observe them and you also write? So it was, like, 
he kind of saw kind of that's what I was doing in real life. Yeah. And he just like incorporated it into my character in the musical. And like, I felt like, oh, like he sees me. Yeah. Like, that's great. Um, <laughs> and so I guess like that, just that, uh, that support from different people throughout such crazy processes has been like one of the most, uh, first of all, welcome experiences, but also like, just like, heartwarming experiences that I've had. Yeah, I think a lot of people, especially early in their careers, they feel like if they're not the loudest voice in the room or if they're not the flashiest person, if you're more introverted or quiet, it's very easy to feel like, well, that person over there is doing somersaults. How is anyone going to care and appreciate me at all? So yeah, yeah. to know that you are, I mean, this is it's said so often, but you know, you are enough and being you, you have value, your uniqueness. It's not always about being the person barking the loudest. Sometimes right, yeah. the most interesting person oftentimes is the person who's not the person going, oh, well, guess what I did? <laughs> <laughs> so that's amazing. And that's great that you've had such support in, in your career thus far. And I only wish you more of that support with the people you work with and for more great projects, which I know are to come. Um, I told you there's going to be a lot of compliments and I just I'm I was blown away by Bell. If anybody here hasn't seen it, I mean number 1 you're listening to my podcast, I'm in it, so I I'm feeling a little bit hurt that you haven't watched it, but for the very least, listen to the soundtrack on Spotify and it's every single song is phenomenal. Kylie is truly one of the next great talents I believe of of this generation. So, um all of my, my yeah. love and luck and support to you in any and everything you do. I'll be rooting for you every step along the way. Um, and thank you for doing this podcast. I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy it, and they're going to probably see a lot of themselves, a lot of the newer people who listen, um, in kind of your story. So it's really inspirational and encouraging. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I've been, like, seeing all of the, like, clips and stuff and watching them of your experience your um of your podcast and like listening to it and i was like i hope he asks me ah, yeah. you were on the list from like the get-go like really? yes like there's a very oh early God. i mean keith would would laugh because we have a very early list of things and it's like i'm gonna have kylie on and this is i'm just so glad that you uh, said yes and and, and did because bell course. was one of those special really special projects for me i mean like my room is just filled with a bunch of i don't know if you got one of i got like one of these things and i was like yes i have that the bell it's the bell version there. yeah like yes. it's just and I have the dragon too oh yeah. you got all oh, amazing yes, i gotta get the bell yes. one i someone someone sent me this it was like i was like wow that's too oh, kind that's so but it's <laughs> such a it's such a beautiful movie and like it, i think it will be timeless which is uh a really really it's it's like I'm, I'm proud to say that because a lot of movies that you watch them and then that's it. Like it, it floats away in time. There's so much content, but I really feel like Bell is a re like irreverent and it will live on past, um, you know, for, for times to come. It's just a very real and in a lot of that, especially for the American audience is your performance and everything you do with it. So I, I play a small part in this movie. I may be the beast, but it's a very small part in, in <laughs> like you are the, the juggernaut, uh, the tour de force of this movie and it's oh exceptional. So kudos Thank to you. you thank you so much <laughs> it, I, seriously um i hope to have you back i want to see you in la now this is gonna happen yes. you're gonna come and do a show out here i'm gonna yes. help make it happen if i can because thank that you. would be amazing <laughs> so um that's what we'll, we'll put a pin in that but again thank you for coming on and everybody give it up for kylie right here oh my god thank you for having me my really pleasure we'll talk soon <laughs> Yes. I get the feeling that Kylie doesn't even know how talented she is, which is one of the most uh, uh, magical things about her because she has such um, humility and honesty. And I'm just beyond excited for where she is going to go in the very near future. To, to be able to carry an entire movie the way she did not only vocally as a as a singer but through her performance is it's mind-blowing and if I think about myself at her age if I had gotten the same opportunity I would have crumbled and folded and I don't think I had the skill or talent at her age to 
to do what she did. It's just so impressive. And Bell is such a great movie. And it's all thanks to her. And I'm just honored to be a part of it and to know that she kind of carried the show. Uh, so if you haven't watched the movie, get on that. It's on HBO Max. You can get the DVD or Blu-ray. It's available. And uh, check out Kylie's stuff. Uh, follow her on all social media so you, so you can see when she's going to be performing again. She said she performs every month, so I'm really excited about that. Hopefully, she'll come to L.A. soon. But thank you guys for watching once again. What an amazing, amazing guest, Kylie McNeil. I know you all have been waiting for it, so there it is. Uh, like, subscribe, follow, all the good stuff. Uh, leave a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and we will see you all on the next one. 